Cheese. Hey, what's up, my friends? My name is Knight, and I'd like to welcome you guys to a brand new channel. Oh! Alright, so what this channel is going to be about is basically 3D modeling and 3D printing, anything that I take interest in, but mostly Iron Man stuff. And well, it's mostly going to have documentation style and some integration of tutorial style videos. Alright, you got that? Good. Because I'm not going to say it again. Alright, so as you can tell here, I basically ended up making a uh, an Iron Man helmet. And what you might think, whoa, Knight, that's a pretty good first try. But uh, no, this ain't my first rodeo. Sorry, future me here. I also wanted to mention that this helmet will not be the final helmet that I'll be using, but will be treated as a rough draft. I basically wanted to use this helmet to hone in and familiarize myself with the steps that are going to be needed to basically make the whole suit, as well as use this to see what the helmet's going to look like and basically use this to perfect the second helmet. But as I said before, this isn't exactly my first rodeo, if you couldn't tell. So if you want something to uh, make fun of, excuse me, there's a, uh, there's this thing. All right, so a little bit of a history lesson. This thing is actually six years old. So this thing is ancient. I basically did this the old fashioned way. I used Peppercura, laid it with resin, and then painted it. And uh, he looks janky. And before you ask, he does light up. I just need to kind of peel this off. And he's got these like, little Christmas lights going on here. Turn this on, and bada boom bada beanie, there you go. To be honest, he kind of looks like uh, Iron Man's stupid cousin, uh, Nickel Man. So yeah, there's that. So I'm gonna go ahead and place this back here, and there you go. So yeah, in my opinion, I think I came a long way from uh, where I came from this guy. And then fast forward, I got a printer, several failed attempts later, and we get this guy. I treat this mostly as a test print just to just to play around with painting methods and I used all clad for this thing and uh, to be honest it looks pretty good. Don't ask about the other missing parts, I, I never bothered buying a uh, white marker. And if you turn to the back, it just doesn't look clean. It, I had to weld it together in a bunch of areas because uh, it was pretty weak, but uh, it's pretty strong now I think. And then we finally fall into your boy. The Provident Sun. I will definitely say that this is probably my most private work I've had so far, um, in my opinion. And let me tell you, this thing came out beautifully. However, there are some little mistakes I have made, uh, mostly not foreseeable, but now uh, no excuse to miss them anymore. So now we're going to cover this helmet and uh, I'm going to start with the modeling process. And let me tell you, this thing is not print ready. When you buy the model, you're gonna have to do a lot of tweaking yourself. One main issue is, is the thickness, especially around the helmet. It's not thick enough, so you're gonna have to increase the thickness. The face plate was fine, so I didn't really have to tweak it too much over here. However, the eyelids, <laughs> hold up. These things are just snail shell thin. So these are the version 1.0 of the original eyelids. It's basically this, back, this black portion around the eye. So at first I never bothered in uh, increasing the thickness on these bad boys and these are super thin. You know what happened? They snapped. So yeah, this other one, this other one snapped. I tried to glue it back together because I was just too lazy to uh, reprint them. I don't know why. But yeah, I didn't feel like it and uh, yeah, these things are just falling apart. So I called it off. I increased the thickness and yeah, they're much more resilient. And so that's that. Now this portion is, was a pain in the ass. So this entire detail portion was just one thin layer. So I had to delete the entire thing and redo this entire thing. I'll probably show you guys in the uh, in one of the 3D modeling videos I'll do in the future. That's just the explanation I have for now. And so yeah, so that's the basic stuff for the 3D modeling. It's just in three pieces. And now for the sanding. I actually did several layers of primer and sanding and uh, I kind of made a mistake there. Because I was doing several layers of sanding and priming, I was basically gunking up the, uh, the sandpaper way more than I needed to. And I was just wasting sandpaper. So what am I going to do for the second helmet? is I'm just going to go through all the sandpaper grits in one go without priming and then after that I'll prime and I'll do touch up after that just so I don't have to burn through so many sandpapers. Then I went on to the basic mechanism and that's basically just magnets. So yeah, so I basically stuck magnets on by, uh, by attaching them by their sides, not by the actual face, as well as 3D modeling these uh, little pegs in here if you can see them. There's one right there. Just to act as a stopper for the piece to hit so it doesn't just like blast through into the helmet and well uh it works just fine just stick that on there and you stick this back on right there like that honestly that's just uh least clearer than this guy i literally have to peel it off because all the pieces are just locking into each other which is okay i mean at least it's not gonna fall off but uh it's just a uh, a hassle and after that we move on to the paint 
Now the red. That thing was super finicky. This isn't the exact shade of red that I was going, but it's the right brightness. I don't, I don't want it too bright or I don't want it too dark. I like the brightness. It's The red just has a more of a pink tint to it for some reason. It's probably just the nature of the paint itself. I looked at pictures on the internet. This is Rust-Oleum Dark Cherry, by the way. And voila, they didn't look pink. So yeah, this has like a pinkish tint to it. And that's probably due to the base coat I used. This is just the primer base coat and, it was, and it's more of like a light gray. So it would probably do better with a black base coat or a gold base coat to give it a warmer tint. So yeah, I'm gonna play around with the red a little more. However, the gold, this thing came out perfectly. However, that was not the first gold paint I was going for. The original gold paint I was going for was, uh, was Rust-Oleum Champagne Mist. However, uh, one problem, I couldn't find it anywhere. Not on Amazon, not at Home Depot, not at Lowe's, nowhere in my vicinity could I find it. No one had it. So what's the next logical thing I did? I went to the good old RPF and I found a thread made by Ab Eleven or Ab Elliton, whatever his name is. Sorry if I butchered your name. But yeah, he used Volvo Lunar Gold. Let me just say that this is actually the perfect gold. So yeah, this paint seems to be a metallic kind of paint. So I decided, you know what? I'm gonna experiment a little bit. So one of these, I put a black gloss base coat and the other one was just a primer base coat. And uh, to be honest, um, I don't see a difference. To be honest, it's a little strange because this had the primer, this had the black gloss coat, and the primer coat seems to be shinier. But other than that, I kind of don't see a difference, so I'm not gonna deal with that. Oh yeah, by the way, last minute, I wanted to fill in the mouth part. So the original model didn't have anything covering the mouth, so I just went to another one of the models and uh, I pulled out the little mouthpiece inside and I put it on this guy. And so if you could tell, those things have very tiny details. So I just said, hmm, maybe I can make it. So I tried and, um, yeah, whoops. Yeah, this thing was, um, was a no-no. I mean, at least I got the detail, so yeah. So I'm probably gonna think about getting a resin printer sometime soon, just cause uh, there are some minute details uh, hidden around the suit. But uh, am I gonna use this part? Hell no, it's garbage. And last but not least, we move on to the grand finale. There he is, in all his glory. So yeah, I basically ended up sticking on uh, one of these bad boys, which I was introduced to on YouTube. Shout out to Frankly Bill. Thanks for the idea. So as you can see in one of his videos, uh, these things are bendable. So they're quite malleable to your surface. Also, don't mind the parts I didn't paint, like this area and this area. I don't have very much all clad left, so I want to save that for the final helmet. And so yeah, that's pretty much all I got for the things I've learned building this helmet. And I will definitely hope that I apply it to my next helmet, just so I don't mess it up. And so yeah, other than that, it's a uh, just crazy accurate model. I'm so happy I stumbled upon this guy. And so yeah, that's all I got for this video. If you want to see how I edit 3D models, stay tuned for the next video. And I'll show you guys how I, how I go about with the 3D models. And basically prepping them for 3D printing. So yeah, so after this, it's going to be a documentation of me making the entire suit by next Halloween. And I'll also show you guys my tips and tricks on how you can do it for yourself as well. So yeah, so that's going to be it for now. If you guys like this video, go ahead and like, subscribe, and comment. Do whatever you need to do. Go ahead and hit that bell notification so you don't miss any content that comes out for my build. And so yeah, so that's going to be it for me. And I'm a dip.